used to call me on my cell phone. Late night when you need my love. Call me on my cell phone. How often is your cell phone with you? I basically use my cell phone all the time. It's with me probably 24-7. My cell phone is always with me. <laughs> I actually left my cell phone in the car today and I just had to think of an excuse to actually go back to the car and get it. So uh, pretty much every time, the whole time. Yeah, me too, pretty much. Like 24-7? Yeah, 24-7, have it all the time. So, okay, so one second. I, my Blackberry is completely messed up and I had that with me all the time, but now I have this iPhone that's garbage battery, so it's usually on the charger, and that's like maybe less than half the time I have my cell phone. What would happen if you did not have your cell phone with you for 24 hours? Uh, I think I would it would create kind of a panic for me because I need my cell phone uh, for school, for work, for family. I need it for texts, emails, etc. Unless I was out bicycling, absolutely nothing. <laughs> I would cry. <laughs> It's true. Okay. It's true. I would just die. I need my phone. <laughs> Literally, I would panic. I'm like, what the hell? What happened? I need my phone. I can't communicate. It's like my life. I need my phone. I would miss out on a lot of rides from my parents. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think I'd just feel like out of touch with everybody, and I wouldn't have a calculator. What would I forget? <laughs> For me, uh, I don't think I could survive. I mean, I've lost my phone a couple times, so it's, nothing will happen. <laughs> Yeah. I'd probably be fine. I'm going on a trip to Argentina where I'm not going to have one for a month, so I don't think I'll lose my mind or anything. If we said cell phones causes brain tumors, would you stop using it? Um, well, yeah, like, you have to convince me, like, how does it, and, like, I'd look for an alternative for, like, some, something else, like, a better cell phone or something like that. Uh, yeah, you guys have to convince me. I mean, it take a lot of time, but still. Is this an important part of our life? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think cell phone is necessary for like everyday life for me. I need it, again, to do my uh, daily activities. Um, I don't think so, because nobody uses a cell phone much as a phone. They just use it at arm's length to text and do whatever. So, Or they use a, a headset to actually talk. So, It only, may, no, but... Only you use a headset. Oh, okay. <laughs> only I use a headset. <laughs> Okay. I think I would use it as much, but I don't know, I feel like I'm just so hooked on technology in general that it'd be a little difficult to part ways yeah. right away, yeah. I would question it, like want to like know a little more about why it gives me brain tumors, but yeah, I would limit myself from it, I guess. Uh, yes, if you did, if I'd probably look up scientific literature to prove that, and I'm a scientist. Do you believe cell phones give you brain tumors? I believe maybe it might, uh, I'm not sure, but even if it would, I don't think I would stop using it. Do you believe cell phones give you brain tumors? No. Nope. Not adults, for sure. We're good. We're on the downhill <laughs> slide. Other, other things can give us brain tumors. And you've heard of like carbon tax credits? She gives me her cell phone tax credits so that she doesn't have so many to bear the responsibility. <laughs> so we'll share a brain tumor one yeah. day. <laughs> so do you believe cell phones will give you brain tumors? Uh, yeah, well I do because I have some idea like they have harmful radiations and stuff so they might cause a cell tumor but if you take the safety precautions uh, I think you should be fine. Um, yeah, like what he said, um, radiation. So like for the example with me since I'm a girl and I do that a lot often too so like you know putting your phone like in your boob or something which is obviously causing radiation so it's not good but Brain tumor, I think that's a little too extreme, but if anybody can convince me, then sure. So, do you believe cell phones give you brain tumors? I don't know about brain tumors, but it must have some kind of effect, because there's like radiation going through it and stuff, and that can't be that good for you, considering how often we have our phones in our hands and like so close to us all the time. So, can't, I don't know about brain tumors, but definitely some kind of health effect. Yeah, that's true. I. I'm not sure about brain tumors. I've never heard of brain tumors. <laughs> the tumors in your brain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, like, I don't know if phones actually cause that, that's all. <laughs> so do you believe cell phones causes brain tumors? I don't at this point, no. I haven't seen any evidence to prove that. And uh, if a review or something comes out in nature and I believe it, then I'll stop using one.
As you can see, people rely on their phones and without concrete evidence, they'd be unwilling to give them up. Many studies have been done to examine the link between cell phones and brain tumors, but a lack of consistent findings leads to skepticism. This controversy has led to the World Health Organization classifying cell phones as a possible carcinogen. The city of Berkeley, California has responded by creating a right-to-know law. This law requires cell phone stores to mention the health risks associated with phones. A Denmark study of nearly 360,000 adults showed that there was not an increased risk for brain tumors among those who used a cell phone for over 13 years. The Interphone study, which involved 13 countries, did not find an association between cell phone use and glioma rates. However, people who used their phones for 1,640 hours without a headset had doubled the risk of a brain glioma. More studies are being done to try to solve this controversy. The COSMO study will actually be looking at phone records for more accurate data analysis. Additionally, the Moby Kids study will be looking for the effects of cell phone usage on 10 to 24 year olds. There's a major limitation that affects studies and causes their inconclusiveness. This is the latency period. The latency period is a time between the exposure and the development of symptoms. Some diseases, like lung cancer, take many years for smoking tobacco to actually cause lung cancer. This could be said for cell phones. Cell phone usage has been increased over the last decade, and we will not see the true effect until more time is allowed to pass. So studies with longer latency periods to examine will yield more accurate results. More research needs to be done to examine the link between cell phone usage and brain tumors. Ideally, a randomized controlled trial would be designed, but it would be hard to find a control group that does not use cell phones. Other studies uh, that could be included would be prospective studies which follow people who already use phones, or case control studies where a collection of similar people can be matched up and analyzed. Cell phones use something known as radio frequency to communicate with other devices, which falls under the category of electromagnetic radiation. There are two forms of radiation which humans come in contact with, ionizing and non-ionizing. Because cell phones use non-ionizing radiation, they are low-frequency microwaves which are less harmful to humans. Ionizing radiation is emitted from X-rays, radon, and cosmic rays, while non-ionizing radiation is emitted from devices with extremely low frequency or power frequency. In regards to cell phone use, body tissues absorb this non-ionizing radiation which creates hypotheses that cell phone use is linked to tumors. So far, the only known biological effect of radio frequency is heating. However, it will not effectively increase body temperature. A recent study conducted by Valkov and his research team concluded that when people use a cell phone for 50 minutes, brain tissues on the same side of the head as the phone's antenna metabolize more glucose than did the tissues on the opposite side of the brain. Cell phones currently operate at a frequency range of about 800 to 2200 megahertz. In this range, the electromagnetic radiation remains at the non-ionizing level, meaning less harmful to humans. The largest study internationally linking cancer and cell phones was introduced in 2010, which concluded that participants who used cell phones for 10 years had doubled the rate of brain glioma. Glioma, in other words, means tumors. Though adults may not be susceptible to increase in tumors from cell phone use, children, on the other hand, are more likely to develop tumors from non-ionizing radiation. This is because their skulls are thinner and still underdeveloped. Therefore, radiation can penetrate deeper into their skulls and cause tumors. This also relates to younger children absorbing more non-ionizing radiation from cell phones than adults. This emphasizes the dangers of cell phone use in children and how they should not be given cell phones as a toy. And additionally, parents should think twice before buying cell phones for the children. Because cells divide at a faster rate in children, the impact of non-ionizing radiation is stronger. National Institute of Health states that radiation emitted after just 15 minutes on a cell phone increases activity in brain cells. They determined this by how much glucose was being metabolized in the regions of the brain where non-ionizing radiation occurred, as mentioned before. A research article published in the American Journal of Epidemiology by Sedetsky and his team determined that heavy cell phone use is linked to parotid gland tumors. It was estimated that there is an increased risk of PGT or parotid gland tumors when cell phone, is, cell phone use is ipsilateral. Ipsilateral means on the same side of the body. Regular use for 
5 to 10 years increase the chances of parotid gland tumors. The article determined that there was a dose-response relationship between the side of use and the parotid gland tumor. This means that the more you use the cell phone on one side, the greater the risk of acquiring PGT, parotid gland tumor. People use cell phones for more than making calls. It is very common to have a phone connected to Wi-Fi and some believe that this can cause brain tumors as well. Additionally, some people are skeptical if Bluetooth headsets have the potential to cause brain tumors because they are often left in the ear for long durations of time. Wi-Fi is a local area wireless computer networking technology that allows electronic devices to connect to the network. The radiation emitted from cell phones are non-ionizing, similarly to the radiation given off of a microwave. Majority of the radiation is localized in the modem's box. Here we have wave signals used to encode digital information for transmission and demodulate signals to decode the transmitted information. The goal is to produce signals that can be transmitted easily and decoded to reproduce the original digital data. Bluetooth is a wireless technology standard for exchanging data over short distances. Bluetooth networking transmits data via low-power radio waves. It communicates on a frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. Strong doses of radiation have been shown to damage DNA and cause harm to the body. However, frequency given off from both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth emitted from cell phone use is not strong enough to cause an increase in cell growth to produce cancer activity. A study conducted to examine cell phone radiation exposure on brain and associated biological systems looked at different effects of radiation at low levels, such as microwave radiation on various different species. The result for human trials showed changes in gene and protein expression. Mobile phone radiation exposure disturbs the cytoskeleton component of f fibers by phosphorus. The article concludes and states that all of the studies reveal that oxidative stress is a major mechanism affecting health. Radio frequency electric magnetic wave from cell phones may damage the brain. However, more studies are necessary to provide evidence. Bluetooth can be an option to decrease the amount of radiation being absorbed. Globally, the usage of cell phones keeps increasing. Based on current trends, cell phone usage is expected to continue to increase. It is approximated that each year, cell phone usage will increase by 200 million. A study has shown that a new generation is using cell phones. The average age of a child receiving their first phone is 6 years old. Comparing this to 2010, where the average was 12 years old, the children are now getting cell phones at half the age. Children are more susceptible to absorbing the radiation caused by phones, and this has the potential to affect their brain development. By the time a child has reached the age of 24, they would have been using a cell phone for 75% of their life. Most studies have only examined a latency period of 10 years, and by the time the average child reaches 26 years old, they would have been exposed to cell phones for 20 years. The average amount of teenagers using cell phones has been increasing, almost reaching the exact average as adults owning cell phones. As cell phone usage is on the rise, it is important that research is done to examine the potential health hazards of cell phones. Although cell phones are only labeled as possible carcinogens, it would be wise for individuals to practice prevention and control techniques to limit their exposure to cell phones and decrease their risk of developing health complications like tumors. Use your phone less. Avoid making long phone calls, use a landline, or even text the person that you are trying to reach. Alternate the side that you choose to pick up the phone when you talk. This will lower the amount of radiation being concentrated ipsilaterally. Keep the phone away from your body. Apple says to keep your iPhone 5 eighths of an inch away from your ear, while Blackberry says to keep your phone 0.98 inches away from your ear. When making a phone call, put the phone on speaker and hold it away from your body. Phone calls use the most radiation when they're outgoing and trying to reach cellular towers. Use a headset or a Bluetooth device. However, do not keep the Bluetooth in your ear for long durations of time. Or, 
Alternate which side you wear it in. Put your phone on airplane mode. This will shut down all radio frequency on the phone. Although some studies suggest that cell phone use can increase the risk of developing brain tumors, current evidence is not conclusive. However, current literature has been enough for the World Health Organization to support and label cell phones as a possible carcinogen. Other carcinogenic hazards that are grouped with cell phones are lead, engine exhaust, and chloroform. Brain gliomas are thought to be the most common tumor caused by cell phones. Brain gliomas are mal malignant or cancerous brain tumors. Acoustic neuromas can potentially be caused by making calls on a cell phone. They are potential tumors on the nerve connecting the brain to the ear. Although there is no proven association between cell phone use and brain tumors, there are other health risks that are also documented. Males who keep their cell phones in their front pocket can have reduced sperm count. Excessive te texting can lead to arthritis in the first metacarpal. And because of the increase of screen staring in the past few years, cell phone users are susceptible to eye strains. Cell phones emit HEV light, which can cause permanent damage to the eyes. Some signs and symptoms include irritable eyes, blurred vision, eye fatigue, or neck, head, and back pain. Although we are very dependent on our phones, we do not have enough information to say that cell phones give us brain tumors. However, we also do not have enough information to rule out the possibility of developing brain tumors. We will not know the true side effects of cell phones until more research is done.